Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Symphony for Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial, we're going to get started with the motion matching proportion of Motion Symphony. Motion matching is the flagship technology of Motion Symphony, and it is much bigger than the other technologies like pose matching or, or and stuff like that. If you're interested in pose matching, then I suggest having a look at the documentation in the sections and going to those relevant videos. But for now, we're going to get started with the core of what Motion Symphony uh, has, uh, its flagship um, animation node. Now, for motion matching, there's actually quite a lot of s initial setup. And while you can you can do it quickly, the first time might take some time understanding why you're doing it and what you're doing. I recommend having a look at this pipeline overview and getting a good understanding of what we do. So first we create a motion configuration, then we create a motion calibration, then we create a motion data asset and we configure it. That's where we add our animations. Uh, so you probably won't understand what these mean at this time, but we're going to go through one video at a time. So the first video, this one is going to be about motion configuration and the next will be calibration, et cetera, et cetera, until we've gone through this entire pipeline. Now I'm not going to explain every single setting that's going to make the video way too long, but this documentation does have information on every single setting. So I highly recommend you look at it. Without further ado, let's go to uh, have a look at how we create our motion config and all that. Uh, please have a look at this documentation as a reference to this video. So let's go to our project and somewhere in our project in our content browser, we're going to go to animation and we're going to create a motion matching config. We can name it whatever we like. I'm going to call this my config. Um, you should probably name it something that suits your project and it's going to be easy to find. If we open it up, we get this inspector. Now, the first thing we need to do is select a source skeleton. Because with motion matching, we're tracking poses and we're tracking bones, it's going to be highly dependent on the skeleton that we're using. So we need to bind it to a source skeleton. Effectively, you're going to need at least one motion config for each skeleton you plan to use motion matching on. So I'm going to choose U4 Mannequin Skeleton because that's just the one we have. And the next thing we need to do is define our trajectory and pose configuration. So basically the motion matching config file basically tells the system what we want to match, how many trajectory points, what's the timing of the trajectory points, how many bones we want to match. So let's go and do that. I'm going to add five trajectory points. Now, um, this is just the normal setup that I always do. You can experiment with it, but usually we want to, uh, you know, match a trajectory that is one second into the future and up to one second in the past. I usually have two points in the past, zero points, negative 0 0.66, negative 0 0.33. So these are evenly spaced. Uh, that's why I've done them as 0 0.33, 0 0.66 instead of round numbers. And then in the future, I'm going to have 0 0.33 seconds, 0 0.66 seconds, and then one second. So now I've got five points evenly spaced, two in the past, three in the future. Now it is important that these are in order from lowest to highest. So whatever trajectory you, configuration you come up with, you just put it in here with the timing that you want. So trajectory point one will be in the past, two will be in the past, and then we'll progressively get higher to our, our final one second trajectory point. So again, we are this file is like a configuration for our motion matching saying, this is what we want to match. This is our trajectory configuration. Next, we want to tell it what bones we want to match. So this is basically just a list of bones and it's uh, configured to our skeleton. So, so whatever uh, skeleton you put up here, these are the bone names that are gonna show up here and we want to choose which ones we want to match. It's be very tempting for many people to just add tons and tons of bones. Don't do this. You you really don't need to. If motion matching is done correctly, um, then you only need about three bones. Three bones, uh, even two is probably the minimum, but I'd recommend three. Uh, you could go up to five by matching the hands as well. It really depends on your game. Uh, if you want to. Um, if the upper body is doing some really important stuff, you might want to match the hands as well. But for a general locomotion set, just start with the, the feet and the hips. So I'm going to get the right foot, foot L, and I'm going to get the left foot, foot R. Uh, and the last one I'm going to get is the hips. Now you could either use the, the hip, well, it's called the pelvis in this case, pelvis. You could either use the pelvis or the neck. I've had success with using both. It's basically just a central stable um, 
kind of uh, bone. The hips kind of helps with, you know, your up and down motion when you're running, I suppose. But the, the neck can also be used like if you're, uh, it, it'll help you separate, distinguish between things where you're like crouched down or you're leaning over or something like that. But the standard is to just start with the left and right foot and the pelvis. Okay, that's it. That is our configuration set up. Now you might not know how to use this and that's fine. We're gonna go through that in the next tutorial. I just wanna keep these tutorials nice and modular. So we're looking at one thing each time. So this is the first thing you are gonna do with every, uh, with every motion matching project. You might have only one of these for your entire project or you might have many. It really just depends on your project. Uh, for now, we're just gonna start with this and that is about it. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at step two which is creating our motion calibration. Now motion config told us what to match. Our motion calibration will tell us how to match it. Uh, how important is each trajectory point? How important is each bone? All that stuff. And that is um, the next step. And we'll have a look at that in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching. I will see you then.